So we did the first fear cure on her, and within 15 minutes, that seven decades long phobia melted away. Okay, so uh, I am known as I am hypnotist here in VR chat. In real life, I have more than 10 plus years experience and uh, over thousands of people that I've seen in real life as a hypnotherapist. And uh, I've also done stage and street hypnosis, uh, which has been a very fulfilling and amazing career. Um, some of the questions I get asked constantly is, can you hypnotize? Ties, uh me and which the answer is yes and a lot of people there's a lot of myths that go around about hypnosis and one of the things is like mind control or that it's a form of manipulation in which hip there it can be used in manipulation but those cases are usually very rare because for hypnosis to actually work it has to be something called rapport between the hypnotist and the subject you can only fake rapport up to a certain extent and it's you can't get the same effects in hypnosis if there's no rapport with the subject the only way to get genuine rapport is to be genuinely interested in the person and genuinely have their best interests uh, at hand now examples of hypnosis that everyone has experience when uh they say they've never been hypnotized or never experienced hypnosis is when a person zones out when they could be deep in daydream they could be uh driving a car they could be uh at movies and i'm a play a person is is uh so absorbed in an experience that awareness of everything else fades is a uh, hypnotic trance uh hypnosis or hypnotism is what is done by the hypnotist when he's given suggestion to a person that he's helped to induce into that natural state. So the the idea of mind control and the idea of the, the shadiness kind of gets removed in situations like that. Uh, a person under hypnosis will can't want anything that they wouldn't do in their normal uh, everyday life. There's still a level of awareness that, that is there, no matter how deeply hypnot hypnotized the person is, no matter how far down they go into it and the there's a part of the critical what's, co what's called the critical faculty that's always active when a person is uh under in a hypnosis hypnotic state so if someone uh got the idea to use hypnosis as a manipulation or to try to make someone do something against their will it simply won't work uh because there's always that part of the mind that is uh watching out for that person's best interest there are some amazing things that can be done that when in hypnosis which gives us uh access uh direct communication with the person's unconscious mind, which is the, the realm of imagination. It's the realm of creativity. It's where emotional light is very uh, childlike. A uh, common belief in uh, hypnosis uh, is that uh, it can't really tell the difference between imagination and reality. And examples of that is like with the movie example. So when a, a person goes to the movies and we're in that relaxed state and we're enjoying the the experience we will watch it with complete childlike uh wonder whenever we're sitting in the in enjoying that experience we're never sitting in the movie especially if it's a movie we enjoy where we're questioning what's happening on screen we're going oh this is fake those are actors you know we we know that uh there's no way we can enjoy it because we know those are uh, people who get paid millions of dollars to play out a story we we don't we don't go through that we sit there and we uh, enjoy the movie and we respond to it emotionally as if we're actually witnessing something and that's because the unconscious mind can't tell the difference between imagination and reality when we're watching a horror movie and someone gets killed on screen our unconscious mind alerts us to danger and that's why we jump when when those, when those things happen but we laugh momentarily because we still have that conscious part of our mind that lets us that keeps us grounded in reality and, and uh, we know we're watching the movie at that point so those are some of the uh the basic understanding to let people know more about what hypnosis is the state and the practice of it one of the most rewarding experiences i had was when i was working with uh, a woman who had carried around a phobia a severe crippling phobia of dogs for seven decades she had got Bitten by a dog when she was uh, around 10 years old, and it was a very traumatic experience for her. And it 
had a serious impact on her ability to enjoy a normal life because dogs were everywhere. So she rarely ever lost left her house. If there were somewhere that where she could possibly run into any type of dog, she wouldn't uh, she wouldn't go in any situation where she would possibly be around around a dog. And if there were dogs around, she would have panic attacks to the point where she couldn't move and she would feel like uh, she was in real danger. Sometimes it felt like she was about to die. She had even been through to uh, psychologists and, and had uh, situations where she had been uh, had exposure therapy and, and it didn't work for her because the the thought of being around a dog or even a, a fake dog just had to it was too much of a intense stimulus for her. so she came she came to see me and it was one of one of my early clients it was uh, two years after two years I've been in uh, as a hypnotherapist and I uh, heard her story and we did something was called the fast phobia cure or fast fear cure because we, we can't diagnose a phobia if you're not medically licensed. So we did the fast fear cure on her and within 15 minutes that seven decades long phobia melted away and we saw her drive her car across the street to the gas station or across the street from uh, the clinic and she uh, went to going to the gas station there was a dog that was uh, chained to a to a post outside of it and she went up and she pet the dog with uh without any problem without any fear and, and it, it was uh, such an impactful and rewarding experience it was uh a very emotional to, to see something that was that was so rewarding it was so rewarding it had made a major impact on me and this what one of the things that kept me kept me in the business and i've seen dozens of if not hundreds of cases like that and um, being able to cure things like weight loss and smoking uh, deal with traumas do uh, age regressions and things like that those are very rewarding experiences and there's uh, other sides of hypnosis whether it's recreational stuff dealing with eroticism and things like that those are all fun as well and uh, done stage shows where we do some of the more silly things and some of the more uh, uh, I want to say uh, wacky things, and those are always fun as well, where people forget their name, forget numbers, and, and uh, they get stuck to the floor and, and stuff like that. Those those are uh, things that work, and a lot of people, they see people doing weird weird stuff in uh, a lot of those shows, and they wonder, is are those people faking? Are they just doing it for the camera? Are they just doing it for an audience? In some cases, that can happen, but in most cases, those people are actually absolutely under a hypnotic uh, state and they're responding to a hypnotic suggestion. And that's because of the context. When you see people on stage and they're going and they're doing all these weird and wacky things, they go to those shows knowing that they're going to do those uh, weird and wacky things and they will, they, they're there to do that. When the hypnotist asks for volunteers to come up on stage, he's never forced them to do it. They're there willingly. They know that they're that they're going to do something that's strange, and they're usually performers and exhibitionists, so they have no problem following the suggestions of of the hypnotist on stage. And when he asks them to to do something weird, then they experience it as if it were ex absolutely real, because it's coming from the same place. Um, of of that childlike wonder, that fascination that uh, the unconscious can accept uh, suggestions as if they were reality. And so they have, those are real reactions that most of those people are experiencing. There was one where, uh, and this proves, this proves the story of, of how certain people, how people won't do anything that's against their morals and values, how you can't make someone do something under hypnosis. So there's a show where uh, I had a group of subjects there that were there and they were very hypnotizable very responsive subjects and whenever I gave a suggestion for them to do anything they responded very well we were in a very climate controlled environment and whenever I told them the, the room was extremely uh, hot they were drenched in sweat as if the room was really hot when I told them it was cold they would shiver so they were very responsive and very receptive to hypnosis there was a point in the show in the performance where uh, I gave the suggestion that when they heard a sound, which was a bell, when they heard that, they would get up and they would dance almost uncontrollably, uh, not uncontrollably, but they would dance as if it were the best song they'd ever heard and they would, uh, it would be the most enjoy one of the most enjoyable experiences. Well, when that point came in the show, when the bell went off and 
uh, five of them got up and there was a sixth person who was a woman who didn't get up. She was sitting and she was very deeply in trance still and she didn't respond to the suggestion. I gave it twice even while the others were, were dancing and she still wouldn't respond even though she responded to everything before and everything after that suggestion. So after the show, uh, I asked her why she didn't respond to that one that one part of the show where where um, she was asked where I asked her to dance and she said well uh, she didn't remember the subject she was so deeply hypnotized she didn't remember the, the suggestion but she said uh, I'm glad I didn't dance because in my religion uh, that's against that's against our our beliefs that that was proof to me that a person won't do anything against their morals or or uh values under hypnosis so i started out um i started out with something called neuro-linguistic programming called, or nlp um it's like a subset of hypnosis it's more of the conversational style hypnosis but the techniques that involve don't actually have a person go into a hypnotic trance some trainings require a person to be able to, to bring a person to a hypnotic trance but the one i did didn't require that so it uses a lot of the hypnotic principles with, without the hypnotic trance, but I wanted to know more. So I started taking some some uh, courses, some just basic online courses in hypnosis, but then that sparked my curiosity even further. And as I would uh, as I would practice all, a lot of the exercises with, with just people, anybody who was interested in, in, uh, in doing the exercise, I started going to seminars. A, a lot of uh, popular trainers out there went to a lot of the seminars and trained with uh, with a lot of the the trainers of hypnosis, and eventually would would do conventions like uh like charmed hypnosis and uh, mind quake and play and other uh, conventions like that, and eventually uh once I certified as a, a a hypnotherapist, which here in in my state you don't have to have a medical license or anything, as long as you certify it as a complementary therapy, even though it's, in lots of cases it could be far more effective than some con conventional therapies and i was on and on and running from there and uh, i had uh, lots of success with my early clients and that built the confidence so i started developing ways to to uh, induce trance and get results and uh the more confident i got the better the results i would get and um, never looked back since what was your most troublesome experience as a hypnotherapist? I was dealing with a uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. It was a military vet and he, he had a uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And one thing that we were taught in that is that something caused it, that PTSD. And uh, the course of action I decided to take was to take him uh, back to the experience and, and, and kind of de-traumatize it and make it so he could have relief from that. Well, me regressing him into that experience, he freaked out. He had what's known as an ab reaction, which is short for abnormal reaction. And as he was freaking out and having this reaction, which most hypnotists, if, if you've practiced hypnosis long enough, if it hasn't happened, every hypnotist will face an ab reaction at some point. It's very easy to deal with because when a person freaks out under a hypnotic trance, they're still subject to your suggestions. So e you could easily tell them to open their eyes and, and get them to realize that they're safe and, and, and you can bring them back into trance just to treat that. But that's, and that's what I did. The person uh, freaked out. It was uh, jarring at first, but uh, I still maintained composure and was able to guide him back into the state and help to treat the PTSD. But that was, that was one of the more troublesome uh, hypnotic um, subjects. What kind of hypnosis therapy or what kind of hypnosis exactly do you do? Like, where do people learn about this sort of stuff? Uh, there you can learn from all over. One of my trainers, Mike Mendel, who's a great trainer and his partner, Chris Thompson, uh, which is a plug for Mike. If you see this, um, I'll, I'll send you my address so where you can mail the check. Anyway, uh, they have a great training where uh, it's called the Mike Mendel Hypnosis Academy, and they, they uh, have a website where they, they're a very uh, well-rounded course and they teach hypnosis. I swear I don't work for them. I'm a member of that that uh, academy, but um, that's a great place to, to learn uh, hypnosis. And there's quite a few other trainers that a person can look to, depending on uh, what type of hypnosis they're interested in. Oh, and I should name there are different types of hypnosis. You have comedy hypnosis, hypnotherapy, street hypnosis, uh, stage hypnosis, and you have erotic hypnosis. 
which forms under the form uh, under recreational hypnosis. Another question: How has hypnotherapy helped you in any way? I was the very first person I ever hypnotized. When I started uh, learning about hypnosis, I weighed over 350 pounds. And after I did my first sessions with giving myself suggestions through recordings and stuff that I would listen to before I went to sleep, within a year of that, I went from uh, 350 pounds to 180, and I was and then very lean and in uh and uh in shape from that. So that's one way that how hypnosis has helped me majorly. It's helped me to gain more confidence, and I'm able to hold conversations with people, even do do stuff like this. I made me uh, more conversational and. Uh, able to interact with people better. So it's been a ma major impact on, on my life. What would you say your biggest type of hypnosis you do here in VR chat? What do people request most often? Here in VR chat, most often is something called phantom sense or phantom touch. So in VR chat, uh, we're in a virtual reality environment and we have these avatars which respond to, to our hands and, and it it seems you get a sense of presence here like you're actually in an environment like right now I'm sitting in my room but I'm not aware of sitting in my room it feels like I'm actually in a in a new place and so uh when friends or um any when one you're close to comes up and they they touch your avatar some people if they're really immersed in the game and their the avatar is really personal to them they'll get a sense of you now it may not be actual like pressure and indentations of fingers but there is like a, a like a, a sense, like a ghost touch, or like being uh, touched with a feather. Uh, I would describe it as like a tingly goosebump type of uh, feeling that can uh, be enhanced and increased. And one of the things, one of the ways to enhance phantom phantom touch is through hypnosis, and that's one of the the things I do most here in VR chat uh, to to date. Uh, it's been more than 300 people that uh, have have hypnotized or guided into hypnosis in VR chat. And when I'm doing a phantom touch session, the suggestions I give is to increase phantom touch only to a level that's uh, appropriate and safe for the subject. And when a person is deep in a hypnotic trance, their unconscious mind knows exactly what they're comfortable with, what they would uh, was safe for them. So no matter what I say, it will mean different things to different people. One person may want to have intense phantom sense, so it will respond to that suggestion in a very different way than someone who just wants to feel good and, and have that uh, slight phantom sense. What made you decide to become a hypnotherapy person? Hypnot hypnotist. <laughs> hypnotist. I was interested in it. I thought it was uh, nonsense, but I had curiosity for for a while. Uh, I had a strong curiosity in it. So um, I saw a show where a stage hypnotist was. He was on a, a college hypnosis show, and was so curious about it. But I still thought that the people were like possibly playing around and faking it. So uh, they were packing up everything, and the stage manager was up on stage, and as um, they were getting ready to leave. Uh, I asked him, I said, well, you know, are these people faking? Were they paid? Or is this just to, to, so the hypnotist goes and gets more jobs? There has to be more to it. And he goes, well, you know, uh, he's still he's still here. You know, you can have a conversation with him. And so he explained hypnosis to me the exact same way I'm explaining it to you guys now. And after I was even more curious, so he said, you know, you, you would like, uh, would you like to try it? Would you like to experience the state and, and experience something cool? So, you know, I'm, I'm super curious and, and, and I trusted him at this point. So he uh, takes me into the state and uh, I didn't have any real memory of what he told me. But as I said, you know, he could make me do anything that I wasn't OK with in the first place. So as I'm brought up out of the state, Said, well, well, uh, well, we're good here. You, whenever you're ready, you can, you can, uh, you can get up and be on your way. Well, I went to get up and out of the chair, but I was stuck there. Like it's like I was glued to the chair. I couldn't move. No, nothing was holding me down. And so at that point, I knew there was more to hypnosis than than uh than what I originally thought, and I became obsessed with it at that, at that point. And that's what got me into hypnosis. You said earlier that hypnosis is dependent on faith. Is there like yes any way where a person doesn't have a lot of faith to get into hypnosis at all because i i don't like i don't got a lot of faith in it <laughs> oh, that's okay uh well 
as as mentioned, like with hip with hypnosis and hypnotherapy, what you're having faith in is this idea of mind control. But as mentioned, hypnosis isn't mind control. Uh, you have you have faith in your ability to enjoy a movie. You have faith in your ability to to zone out and get into that deep day, daydream state. You have faith that when you're you're driving home from work, let's say it's a long week. It's a Friday night and you're on your way home from work to go and hang out with your friends. When you get close to your house, a lot of times you will have no memory of the last several miles you've driven because you've been so focused on what you're going to do later that night that those miles just kind of faded faded into the background. Well, you don't have to have faith because you've, you've, you've already experienced those things. So no faith is actually needed. We've already done it. And what I do is now I'm not making anyone go into that. I'm just guiding them into the state. And if a person has is guided deeply in enough into the hypnotic state, then their unconscious mind will be more accepting of it. If we're saying the effects of hypnosis, well, if someone could have such a phobia that it would that it would paralyze their body uh, in certain states, the unconscious mind has the power to shut down processes if it thinks it's what what will benefit you in that moment. And so. If we're talking about some of the hypnotic tricks, which is like, uh, like you know, stage hypnosis, if a person is there and they completely trust a hypnotist, they know they're safe and they know they're there to have a good time, there will be no resistance to the suggestion, and so they will they will respond as if it were it were actually real. So their the unconscious mind has no problem uh, accepting something if it knows it's temporary, if it knows there's no actual damage or anything that's going to occur the session so uh when it's giving suggestions like uh you you'll be stuck or frozen somewhere well the unconscious mind is very childlike it's very innocent so it has no problem playing along with that and so a person will experience those uh very um seemingly real effects and uh it's and it's a lot of fun so no, no one will ever go into like have a suggestion where they'll go well i don't i don't want to i don't want to feel uh my, my legs or, or my hands stuck to the floor. If a person has fear and it won't work, it won't work for them. They won't respond to it. Their their mind won't accept the suggestion at all. But if they know that it's only temporary, that they're completely safe and uh, then they the mind will respond to that. And the unconscious is very much possible of paralyzing uh, certain parts. It Even if it's temporary, it happens every night when we sleep. Uh, sleep paralysis isn't only something we experience when we're waking out of um, sleep it, it happens while we're asleep like if we're sleeping next to someone and we have a dream where we're fighting it keeps from punching that person in the face while we're sleeping or swimming and, and thrashing about so those processes exist in our mind anyway if it comes to hallucination we have full sensory hallucinations every time we close our eyes at night when we dream where we have we feel touch we, we see things we hear things so those processes exist exists it's just accessing them while the person is in a very deep and suggestible state so what would be a couple of things that you would recommend for somebody who's new to hypnosis or somebody who wants to learn hypnosis and be a student start out without trying to master everything at once just get in there and master just a few things at a time you know frederick nietzsche the very famous uh book that he wrote a person must learn to crawl before they walk so uh, you have a lot of people who are who get uh, very, very eager, and overzealous when they first get into hypnosis, and so they want to do all the really, really cool stuff. But there's a foundation that a person has to have before they can start doing that. A person builds that foundation first, then all the cool stuff will 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 happen later because you'll have to master that foundation before you can get some of those effects. And hypnosis is so easy; it doesn't take that long to master the foundation. So it's not like it's going to be a very long process. Uh, I know people who have been studying for very short times so who get amazing results. What about scripts? How how does that work? Do scripts work? <laughs> so scripts can work when a person is, is uh, in hypnotherapy, but I figure if someone's going to read a, a script, to someone and, and they don't work in, in every situation so if a person goes to a, a street uh hypnosis situation and they're going and and reading uh, a script or reciting a script it doesn't come across as genuine because when 
it's like when a person's telling a lie. You instantly know when someone's telling a lie because it's just it's unnatural. So if, if someone is reading from something and they're trying to recite it as if it's a uh, fact, most people will be able to pick up on that, even if it's at an unconscious level and the the result they won't get any result from it but when it's genuine and the person knows what they're doing things will come across as more natural and when somebody can confidently communicate with someone then it's going to be a lot more natural when it comes to scripts they they will they will work if a person is starting out scripts are great for tra as training wheels they're great to practice and to start you on that path and um if you're going to do scripts i say you know find people to practice with uh, use little pieces of the script and then start learning where you can modify it once you start learning more about language. But if you already have the language, you can start from there. Like, uh, just if you, if you don't like hypnotic language, if you practice it, then you don't really need uh, scripts. You can you can do it well without it. I can say I'm both for and against scripts. <laughs> I was just going to interject one small thing that I've started using to tell this to you, Hypno. Just yes. when I'm giving someone a session and try to kind of demystify hypnotism and everything. And it's just a little thing that you can tell them. And it, it's it's just kind of comforting. And it's it's nice to know. And what I tell them is that I said, you know, your unconscious mind, no matter what I do, I can't control your unconscious mind. But what I can do is I can befriend it and then go from there yeah, okay it's just a little tidbit it's just a little kind of comfort phrase and i've started to use it yeah, so more often very, in my sessions i give people so yeah very nice it's and that's reinforces the feeling of safety as well so it's a very good very good little mm -hmm. uh little point little tidbit yes it's like the safety and then like the amount of trust you're building with the person you're next to a genuine connection it makes them more susceptible mm -hmm. yes. to to su suggestion yes so exactly it's like so let's say a person is going to see a movie that seems like propaganda now if it's outside of their morals and values they won't be able to even watch that movie and, and be able to have any kind of emotional response but if it aligns with that person's values and belief then they will get very deeply absorbed in that movie so kind of like that like if if uh if you trust the source then but you're much more likely to be able uh to to listen to suggestion and uh, accept a lot of the the suggestions okay so when we're here in vr chat we have these things called spring joints what they are these little balls that when triggered they float and they're very interesting to look at especially here in vr because they absorb focus and that's one of the first points in, in vr so we'll start from there so i want you to start by keeping your focus on this ball in front of you without trying to do anything without trying to consciously do anything but as you focus you might start to notice a few things you start to notice the surface that you're seated on you notice the temperature of the room you notice your thoughts beginning to fade very slightly you notice how your breathing begins to slow down. You might begin to notice how your blood pressure has also slowed as well as your heart rate. And the more you put your focus in this, the more you start to notice yourself just drifting along, which feels pleasant. And with that pleasant feeling, as you continue to drift and drop and float, you might begin to notice how pleasant it is to just let go as you ease down into that very pleasant trance-like state and become more absorbed in this really enjoying that feeling as your mind and body completely starts to relax and you feel that growing comfort and as that relaxation and comfort grows you begin to drop even further And you start to feel a relaxation, a very deep relaxation as you go even further into trance. And the feeling of safety and comfort, like a cool breeze on a warm summer night. The type of breeze that makes you feel really good as you continue to relax and completely enjoy this experience. 
That's right. And as you continue to drift and drop, that's right, feeling so amazing. And in a moment, we're going to bring you up and out of this state, feeling wonderful, feeling comfortable, feeling fantastic and incredible. I'm going to count up from one to five. And on the count of five, you can awaken, feeling amazing and ready to enjoy the rest of your night here on VR Chat, starting at one, two, three, starting to become alert, starting to become awake, four, eyes becoming, beginning to open, muscles starting to come back into the room, and five, wide awake now. Hi. <laughs> nice. Hi. How do you feel? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, 